What's going on guys? Eddie here, Cornhole Bag Reviews, back again with vlog number 11. We were in Dominican Republic, we stopped by and went to a new St. Cloud blind draw, but tonight we're back at the normal spot. We're back at the tried and true Super Bowl, Wednesday nights, running the live stream, doing the Switch Holio blind draw. I'm excited to see the people I haven't seen in a couple weeks now. Uh, excited to get back out there and play this event. You guys know I love this event. It's usually a pretty good turnout. All the people that come out are really fun to be around. You know, we're coming off two pretty good vlogs in a row. We took first place in Super Bowl and then should have taken first place on uh, on Monday. But, you know, whatever, we ended up in the second place. Still, in the chair game, two blind draws in a row. There might be two this whole playing sober thing. Uh, we'll see if we can keep running it up tonight. But again, it's so dependent on the partner that you get in Switch Holio. So I more so look at how am I playing on the night and being able to finish in the top of the, st or decently close to the top of the standings uh, for a couple times in a row, or at least get someone who can uh, hold their own with me has been really satisfying to uh, finally get those breakthrough partners and make good runs in the events. So you guys know I love my Gladiator Cornhole glove. Uh, people have actually been asking me on the Facebook pages, like, do I actually like it? Do I actually use it? Like, if you watch these videos, you know I, I don't throw without it. It's awesome. It's very affordable. If you're looking for something to maybe give you more consistency or different types of humidity and try out something else, link in the description below, Eddie 10 for 10% off on uh, Gladiator's website. But really excited to drive out there again tonight. Really excited to make another vlog for you guys. Uh, been a little slow on getting these vlogs out. I'm a little bit behind on the vlogs, so bear with me a little bit. But a lot of editing time goes into these things, and I know you guys enjoy them. So I'm going to make sure I keep pumping them out and get the recordings in for the weeks that I'm unable to go out and play. But right now, we're going to keep grinding, keep playing, get back on the get back on the horse, and hopefully continue to play well. So check out with you guys when I get out to Super Bowl. All right, guys, so we are at Super Bowl. We got everything set up, got the stream set up. I got to turn it on here in a couple minutes, but we got a little bit of warm-up in. Uh, we're going to do knockout like we usually do, then we'll get into the four rounds of Switch Holio. Pretty good turnout today. How many people are we have? 29. 29, which is a really solid Wednesday night. It's actually pretty nice out today. It's like 25 degrees, 30 degrees. Way better than the negative 10 we've had uh, the last couple times. So I'll uh, check with you guys after we're done with knockout. So in this event, I decided to break my rule and play knockout. We decided to do that the top three of knockout will shoot at a bomb box. So fast forward to top three and I make it in the top three. I'm the first one to shoot at the bomb box with my trusty Costellos and I miss it just about half an inch short on the box. Putty's behind me and Putty decides to line up for an airmail immediately and immediately knocks me out. So I'm the first one out of the top three, Blake and Putty remain. Blake is the next one up and he lines up with his gray typhoons and his airmail just goes about half an inch deep. So Putty's now up. If Putty makes it, then he wins the entire thing, but it's next one to make the airmail wins. Putty lines up and drills the airmail box two in a row to take down the knockout. All right, so we finished knockout. I actually broke my rule and played knockout today. I was feeling confident, but I made top three. We decided to go to airmail box, which was my idea, and immediately Putty knocked me out in the airmail box. I hit the front side, so I'm not disappointed. It was straight, just low ceilings. I blame those, but either way, took top three. Putty took it down. He took it down on Monday as well. I don't think I have footage of that. No, I don't, but yeah, two knockouts in a week. That's pretty sweet for Putty, but either way, we'll get into round one of pools here, and then I'll check in after we're done with the first game. Game one of pools, we're gonna fast forward up to the point we're down at nine to five. I got the first bag and I started my first one off the back right. Ryan throws a nice little blocker in front of the hole. I'm able to push through it nicely. Then when he misses off the back right, I have an opportunity to wash out the round. At least I slide in my third bag and when he misses off the right again and I finish up for the 10, he finishes up for the eight to only give up two points. So now we're down at nine to seven. The very next round, my partner has first bag and his first bag is a little bit off to the right. Christie's able to punish by bowling it out of the way and going up the middle. That bag now basically out of play. My partner then goes with the front board, and Christie kind of blocks him up. So I don't know if Christie's going to be able to collect that, but really gets in the way of my partner, who then goes off the right side of the board. Christie stays consistent up the middle. Now up 7-1 to one after three bags. When my partner throws his last one off the back, this can be in for a nine spot, which it is. It's a 10 to one round, so they go up 18 to seven. After I get one point, my partner has first bag. Starts with this first one, nice block up the middle, which is really effective against Christy, forces her to go off the back. So opportunity to score here, but then my partner ends up following her off the side, giving it right back. She dials it back in to push through on the second bag. And my partner's third bag, again, 
goes off the back left. So Christy able to capitalize for points. She gets it in, so now up two on the round. This has to be in, but with it off the side, if Christy goes in, they will win the game, which she's able to do. So it's a nine to five round. They get four points and they win the game at 22 to eight. All right, game one is done. Uh, we lost that game 22 to eight, I think. So I, I shot like an 8.5 PPR, so I didn't shoot too bad. Uh, a couple big rounds here and there, not a big deal, but uh, whatever. So we lose the first game of pools. Um, my partner ended up giving up a nine, I think, and like a five. I think I only gave up like one or two points the whole game. Uh, but it is what it is. That's just how how uh, how it works. The guy I was shooting against wasn't giving me big rounds, so it was hard to answer back. Uh, so whatever. So we'll be in the bottom after the first game. If we can win the next three, we'll be in like the middle of the top, I bet. So we'll see how game two goes, um, you know. If we win the next three games, like mediocrely, we'll probably be right in the middle. So we'll see how it goes, but whatever. That's how Switch Olio works. So either way, uh, keep trying to shoot well. I'm happy with an 8.5. The boards are crazy sticky. We decided to throw Surefires anyway, so not super whole friendly. Probably should have thrown Costellas, but he likes Surefires, so whatever. Uh, but check in with you guys after game two of Pools. All right, guys, so a bit of a screw-up on my end. I thought I hit the record button, but I guess I missed it. So game two... Uh, not recorded, but we lost 23 to seven. Um, I shot against Chow, my normal doubles partner. I shot like a 7.5, he shot like an eight. Uh, my partner, I only, I don't think I gave, I maybe gave up like two points in the game. So still shooting really well, not getting, you know, it, it, but sometimes you don't get help in the Switcholios, which is totally fine. So 0 and two, and I think I only have 11 points overall. So firmly in the bottom. Uh, now I kind of want, like, now it's like even more important to just try to get a couple wins, try to get top of the bottom, uh, then you get a really solid partner. Uh, not saying that by any means, just, you know, I, I, I'm currently like the highest PPR at the event or something. So shooting really well, but, uh, just not getting the carry that needed help. So sorry, I forgot the gameplay, but I'll get you guys for games three and four of pools. We start out with the very first round of a game three. I'm shooting against John Warner. We did switch to my Costellos this game because the surefires were too sticky, but my first one's a little off to the right. He gives it back to me by missing his a little further off to the right. So now I could step out with a bumper, go for a left to right cut. I miss the bag and hop a little over the back. When he goes a little short left of the hole, I'm staying determined with this. Sometimes I would give up on it and just try to slide in, but I think I can get this cut. Second try, I'm able to hit the nice right to left cut collect. And when he goes off to the side and knocks his off as well, I'm able to slide in for the 10. So guaranteed at least five here. He's able to make his last bag in for the 10 to five rounds. We start out with a nice five to zero lead. A couple rounds later, after my partner gives up a five and a two, we're down seven to six. My opponent, John, starts with his first one in the hole. I'm able to throw a nice blocker here, which has been my plan against him the whole time. When he throws a front board, I go for the hard push through and I'm able to push my one in and my other one hangs on the right side of the hole, but John will knock it in for me. I'm able to slide in my third bag as well, but I drag his pro sniper a little closer to the hole, which he's able to grab with his last bag. But I finish up for the four bagger to get a 12 to nine round, three more points and we retake the lead nine to seven. After my partner gives up a four, we're now down 11 to nine. John starts with a nice blocker to start, but I go for a really nice right to left cut around, stealing away the middle of the board and then he ends up knocking mine in. I go to cut around again and hit it close to the hole. It could fall, but then when he jams up into it, stops my bag from sliding in. I take over middle control again. Matt's calling for him to just push everything through with my two on the board. He goes fast side, misses off the back, but knocks his in. So I have a big push through opportunity here. I knock one in, but my fast side hangs up. So we get an eight to five round, get three more points, take the lead back again at 12 to 11. After my partner gets another four, we're now up 16 to 11. First bag, I slide nicely up the middle. Content with racing this round, he slides his first bag in as well, and I stay up the middle with my second bag. He again follows. My third bag goes up the middle. He goes for a third bag block here, which I like, but I immediately go for the airmail and hit the airmail. So now he has an opportunity. Does he go to try to slide up and collect this or try to slide around and just give up the two? His partner and him ultimately set on him just stepping out and uh, going for giving up the two because that'd be a pretty tough cut collect and he would lose the game if he missed it. He's able to slide around for the two, but it's a nice airmail for a 12 to two round. Get us the lead 18 to 11. After my partner gives a three and I wash, they have the first bag with the score now 18 to 14. Matt starts with his first bag a little off to the right. So an opportunity to score right off on the first bag here. She's throwing the fast side of the Costellos, um, sticking with the nice and quick on the slow boards. But she's able to slide in the first bag there, get us a two-bag lead after the first shot. After Matt goes off the right side, 
She lays a little bit short left, giving Matt kind of a bumper and a tough collect for her. But then Matt brings a little bit closer by missing off to the left. She sneaks through nicely in the right side of the hole, now laying up 7-2 to two after three bags. When Matt slides in his last bag, she can go in here for a five-point round. But missing off the left but knocking her own bag in, it is a 10-5 to five round, giving us the win 23-14. to 14. All right, game three is done. Uh, I shot really, really well that game. I shot a 10 PPR. Uh, really feel like I, I missed a couple shots, but I, other than that, I felt like I was pretty much up the middle. I hit a couple nice cut collects that I wanted to hit, throwing my Costellos. Uh, just really comfortable. The board, that board in particular, super, super slow, so I'm able to cut and manipulate them really, really well. Uh, but we won 23-14. Um, so really nice win. Nice to get above a 21, get myself out of the dirt bottom and somewhere near the middle. So I'd like to win the last game as well. Give myself a higher of the bottom section, but you know, just keep throwing well. I'm still leading the event in PPR, which is really satisfying. So it's nice to throw well, um, but yeah, we'll continue uh, trying to stay on that run. In round one of game four, I'm shooting against Steve Lamser here. He starts with his first bag nicely up and in. We switched to surefires here because as you can see, the board is a lot faster as my first one rockets off the back. I'm able to make in my second bag. And when he gives me one back off the back as well, an opportunity to wash here on nines, but he misses his slightly off to the right, and I'm able to sneak in the left side for a 97 round to start the game off 2-0. to zero. The very next round, my partner's got first bag. Starts with his first one off to the right. Again, he's throwing the fast side of the surefires, which on these fast boards seems hard for me, but he seems to do it well. He slides in his second bag, and his opponent throws a nice blocker right in the middle. Trying to just push through, he ends up bouncing off a little bit, which is the tough part of fast side against a slow blocker, and then a really nice push through with fast side there. After my partner lays off to the side for a six, opportunity to get six points, but leaves it a little short. So catch a break a little bit there, but still a 10-6 to six round, giving him four points, so we lose the lead 4-2. to two. After I got two washes and my partner gave up a six, we're now down 10-2 to two, three rounds later. But Sam starts with his first one, actually hits the ceiling and ends up short of the board. So opportunity for points, my partner throws his first one off the back left, Sam dials it back in for the second bag. So only up one point here after two bags. When Sam goes off to the left, another opportunity to score, and he's able to sneak in with the fast side surefire. When Sam bounces over the back, ends up with a five, and the surefire barely sneaks in for the 10 to five round, getting us five points back. Starting off the comeback, we're now down 10 to seven. The very next round, I got first bag, and I start nicely up the middle. These boards playing just so much faster than the middle board, it's crazy, but Steve answers me nicely. I throw a nice block right in front of the hole, forcing Steve to push through. He pushes and replace nicely, and I take them all with on the third bag. When he slides right on the back of the hole, I'm able to sneak away with some points here, finishing up the four bagger, and he actually goes off the back going for the airmail drag. So it's a 12 to seven round. Now after being down 10 to two, immediately we're back up 12 to 10. The very next round, the theme of big rounds continue as my partner starts off with this first bag, nicely sliding up the board with the fast side surefires. Can be hard to control, but if you've got a nice soft hard throw or soft high throw, super hole friendly. He's able to slide in the second bag and Sam is able to answer. Third bag and nicely bullying off Sam's bag. And when Sam misses off to the right, big opportunity here. He's able to finish up the four bagger. So in the limited to the four, but Sam misses short right again. So it's a 12 to six round, another six points. So we go up 18 to 10. Again, the very next round, we stick with the theme of big rounds. I start with a perfect first bag block. Steve pushes through it really nicely. I'm able to slide in the second bag and he follows me. Here we go, just staying nice and consistent up the middle again with a little teaser block. Steve going for the airmail, missing off the back, and I'm able to clean up for the four bagger. So he has to go in to extend the game, and he misses it a little short. That's a 12 to 7 round. We go on a 21 to 0 run and win the game at 23 to 10. All right, game four, we won that one as well, 23 to 10. Again, I shot a 10.2 PPR in that game. Steve shot pretty well at an 8.2, but I'm just throwing really, really well. I mean, I threw, I think I threw three four bags in a row. I threw a block with a nice push, forcing him to go off the side. Just Kind of getting everything I want right now, throwing surefires that game on the faster boards. Uh, really comfortable with my shot right now. So we should end up somewhere near the top of the bottom. 
Uh, I think the last time I checked, we're at 19th, I believe, something like that. So I uh, should get the guy around like third, fourth place. There's a really high chance I might get Chow, which I've never gotten Chow in a blind draw, my doubles partner. Uh, it'd be a sweet team. I'd love to play with Chow. So uh, see what happens, but I'll catch some of you guys after after Bombbox. So I'll check in after Bombbox and let you know what my partner is and whatnot. So Steve, the guy I just played against, actually gets drawn for the bomb box. I believe it's about $100 a bag. But he lines up for his first bag here and misses a little long and actually takes out the camera. So you'll see me try to go fix it, but the lady behind here actually has got me covered. So Steve lines up for the second bag. What's going on? Hey, and he's able to hit that one to get at least $100 locked up after bag two. Lines up for bag three and misses just barely to the right. And then the fourth bag puts a little bit too much juice on it again and goes deep. So hits one out of four to win around $100. All right, bomb box done. Steve hit one out of four, which for 113 bucks or something like that. So nice little payday for him. Uh, but I did end up getting Chow as a partner. So I got my normal doubles partner, which is really solid. Uh, we're going to be throwing Surefires, I assume, because that's what he likes to throw. Two of the boards, though, literal glue sticks. So... I know he doesn't like switching off Surefire as much, so it might be, you know, a block, a really block style game on those boards or have to throw it a little bit harder. So we'll see how it goes. If we get one of the slow boards, um, you know, we just got to make do with what we can. But really solid team. It's nice to have a partner that I know I can rely on and that I'm comfortable throwing with and that he can just do whatever he needs to do. He's really good at air mails, so just letting him loose and letting him shoot whatever he wants. So uh, check in with you guys after game one of Bracket. In the first round of game one of winners, they got first bag. We're playing against Bill and Nate. They're throwing Widows on pretty sticky boards, and we're throwing Surefires, which are even stickier. But Luke throws it really hard, so throws his first one up nice in the middle, and Bill answers. Luke gives him back one off the side, but these Widows are pretty cloggy on this sticky of a board, so he's got to throw them pretty hard. Makes his second one in nicely, and Chow gets around the pile well. When Bill throws his third one off the back, Chow's got an opportunity to score and sneaks in the last bag as well. So 10-7 to seven round to start off the game. We start with a 3-0 to zero early lead. Three rounds later, we're now up 4-0. to zero. Chow's got first bag. Starts with his first one nicely up the middle. Again, these bags are playing really sticky, so you got to be pretty straight because the bags were hanging on the hole a bit. Bill goes immediately for the block. Chow gets around it nicely. That bag collectible with a step out. Bill going out aggressively for this Widow. Throwing a step out. It happens to miss a little left and push Chow in. So now Chow perfectly splits the middle, taking over middle control. Especially on slow boards, it's going to be hard for Bill to get anything in. Bill misses off the right side, but then Chow hits his leg on his forward swing and uh, completely misses off the left. But after Bill front boards, it's still going to be a 7-on-2 for a 5-point round, so we start the game up 9-0. to zero. Not a lot of interesting rounds going on down at my end, but I do give up a two, so now we're up nine to two. Bill's got first bag and misses his first one off the right. Child gives it back to him, though, missing in the exact same spot, so both those bags completely out of play. Bill nicely up the middle, and Chow is able to answer. So even going into the third bag, Bill stays nice and up the middle, and here's where Chow misses a little bit. I don't know if he was going for an open board airmail, but it basically hit that way, but it flies over the back. Bill finishes up for the 10, and Chow misses again off the left. So it's a 10-5 to 5 round. He gives him the 5 points back, so now we're only up 9-7. to 7. Next round, it's time for my turn to get in on the action. Nate starts with this first one a little bit off to the left. So opportunity to score here. I slide in my first bag, and he again misses a little off to the right now. So I'm able to split the difference. Now up 4 points going into the third bag. Nate's barely hangs on the hole, but I give it back to him, missing to the left and knocking him in. But he misses his last one off to the left as well. And I'm able to sneak in with fast side for the 10 on 6. Another 4 points. So now we're up 13 to 7. After Chow also gets a 4 point round, we're up 17 to 7. I got first bag and missed my first one short and to the right. You can see how much that thing stuck. Tried to lay a block against Nate there, but a little bit in my lane and uh, basically uncollectible. Nate goes with his first bag and misses off the back. So now I don't need to worry about that bag. I could just finish up because I'm guaranteed points. I make my second bag in and he follows my third bag. Blocks again, but a little bit still on my lane. He can get around this, but he misses a little bit off to the left. This one, I am going to step out and go grab and hit a nice step out, collect. And when he makes in his last bag, it's still a 10 to 7 round, getting us three points, putting us at 20 to 7. Chow's able to get us a single point the next round, so we win the game at 21 to 7. All right, so we just finished game one of bracket. We played against Bill and Nate. 
This guy shot a 6.17 PPR. Back on the cat. <laughs> he, uh, he sucked. I shot an 8.5, so we won. We won 21-7. to 7. I'm thankful that we got an easy game to start uh, because you look like you're, like, drunk. But I know you're not. You're just looking. <laughs> but uh, so we got an easy one to start. There's definitely a lot of really good players here. So the boards were really sticky, do you think? Extremely sticky. Are we good with this sticky bag? Are you okay throwing it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to stick with the Surefire just because he doesn't know how to throw any other bag that exists, um, which is totally fine. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, let's keep making a run. Uh, we've got to adjust a little bit. Hopefully we get the faster boards. I like playing on fast boards. But it's nice to be able to throw an easy blocker because they're so sticky because I trust my cut and my push better than I trust the, my opponent's push in airmail. So uh, I like playing that dirty, messy game. I like going for the ridiculously hard cut shots because that's kind of my forte. So check with you guys after game two of Bracket. Picking up here in round two, I did get Chow to switch to my Costellos, uh, but we're down 2-0. Chow gave up a two to start the game, but this game is just a story of bag adjustment because their bags is surefire slow side, and as you can see, they are sticky and sticking up, and these Costellos are just a lot more hole friendly, but Mike starts with the first one short, and I go near the hole. He goes into the second bag. I'm able to clean up nicely, and then when he lays his third bag block, I block behind, force him to go for the airmail. He pushes one in, but gives me a nice open lane with fast side to clean up for the four pack. Get a nice 12 to eight round, steal four points to start the game up now four to two. After Chow gets three points, we're now up seven to two. I got first bag and I start with one off to the left side. So even if your speeds are right, you still got to throw it straight. Uh, but Mike's again, just sticking up and I throw a little cut blocker, take over the middle of the board. Again, I'm going to go for a step out cut here. I wait for Andrew to let me in for a cut shot and I step out and go for a big swooping cut and hit it exactly how I want but kind of get unlucky that it bounces over the hole. When Mike goes to push with the airmail he ends up knocking mine in and Luke tells me to go around for the cut once again and I say should I go for the airmail he's like nah just do what you just did. So I go again for the big swooping cut and this one I hit and it doesn't bounce over the hole so really nice cut shot there. He goes again for the airmail and hits it. So ends up with an eight to five round. We get three more points, so we go up 10 to two to start. The very next round, Luke's got first bag and he starts with his first one nicely up the middle. You can see it just banging in the back of the hole because he's, he's used to throwing surefires on slow boards. So trying to get him to transition to a little bit of a faster bag just makes it so much easier when the boards are this slow. Slides in his second one. Brandon misses his first one off to the left, but is able to make the second one in. Luke's staying nice and consistent up the middle, and when Brandon misses his second one off to the left, big opportunity. Luke slides in for the four-bagger, and Brandon's able to finish up. It's still another 12-8 to eight round, another four points. We're now up 14-2. to two. After I get one point, we're up 15-2. to two. Child's got first bag. Again, just staying right up the middle. Been pretty consistent this whole game with the Costellos. Brandon's first bag is a front board, so three points here if Child's able to finish up. Second bag is as good as in. Brandon lays short right, and Chow is able to put both of them sitting on the hole. So all they need is a little bit of a love tap. Brandon blocks nicely. I tell him just go up, go for the drag. Um, so Luke goes up for the airmail. Hits the airmail deep, but both of his bags fall for a nine. So Brandon must get one bag in here and kind of jams them all up. So it's a nine to three round for six, which is what we need. So we win the game at 21 to two. All right, round two of winners. We won the game at 21 to two. Uh, I got Chow to throw my Costellos because we were on the super sticky boards again, and they're almost playing like Surefires right now because the boards are literally glue. So I still hit a really nice cut shot. Should have hit two in a row. The second one literally flipped over on the back edge, but I'm still able to cut and manipulate the Costellos on those sticky boards. I should like shot like a eight three. Chow shot like an eight seven five that game. So again, we're still throwing really well. We like playing a little messier going for air mails, but we both had a couple four bags for some big rounds. Uh, all in all, really solid win, um, but there's like three or four. I thought me and Chow were going to be a super solid team. There's like three or four really, really solid teams. Um, a lot of people drove down from St. Cloud tonight where I played on the last vlog, and so a lot of really good players, and they got paired up together and whatnot. So definitely not going to be easy games by any means, but I don't like easy games. I love uh, having to battle out and hit the hard shots. It's just better practice for when I go to these bigger tournaments. So. I'm excited to get the first two wins, but I'll catch you guys after winners round three. 
Round three matchup, we got Putty and Blake. Blake is in the top 20 in ACO, and Putty is a crazy good player. So definitely a tough game, but Putty starts with his first one off to the right, and Chow goes up the middle. We're playing on my fast boards right now, so we're able to switch back to Surefires. It's Surefires v Typhoons, um, but Chow a little bit too firm on the third bag. Putty's able to finish up the eight. But Chow goes in nicely on the first round to get us a 10 to 8 start. Two points off the bat. We're up 2 to 0. Now, this game has been crazy tight. I'm actually fast forwarding nine rounds to round 10, and the game is 4 to 4. But Chow's got first bag. I just scored a two on Blake. So, first bag really important in this matchup. But Chow misses a little off the right, and Putty gives it back to him. Chow sneaks around nicely, kind of taking over hole control, setting up a chance for a big airmail. Putty decides to go for a cut here. Missing off the back and knocking Chow in. Not a giant fan of that shot choice, but then Chow once again, I love that he took over the middle, keeping the block there. Putty tries to cut once again and knocks Chow in again off the back. Chow takes over the middle of the board, forcing Putty to either take everything in and give up three, lay on and give up f five. Goes for another cut and ends up pushing Chow in a third time over the back. So it ends up being a 10 on three for seven points. So after a huge wash fest, it's now 11 to four. After I give up a two and Chow gives up a one, it's now 11 seven. Blake's got first bag. Starts with his nice one, bouncing right up the middle. And I miss a little bit off the left. So definitely don't want to give Blake too many opportunities. He's definitely one of the best players that comes to the event, but he bullies me out of the way and slides in his second bag. And I'm able to follow with mine. My bag's cutting a little left on me, throwing from the outside. So just trying to dial it in. Blake staying consistently right up the middle. And there it goes on me again, cutting off to the left. So down four after three bags. Blake lining up for his fourth bag. And he's able to slide it in. So I need to go in just to limit the damage. I'm able to sneak in the last bag. But it's still a 12 on eight. They get the four points they need to tie us up 11 to 11. After Chow gets up a two, it's now 13 to 11. Blake's got first bag. And Blake starts with his first one, like usual, nicely right up the middle. Shooting against Blake is very difficult because he doesn't miss much, so that's why you see me lay that level 2 blocker. Force him to step out and go for something a little bit harder because I'm not just going to beat him in a straight slide battle. Steps out and goes to try to get around and ends up front boarding. So block does its job. I actually want to leave the block in the way, so I step out and just go for a cut. Kind of a dumb mistake missing one off the side because he gave me a bag on the front and I immediately give it back to him. But he stays out. Trying to sneak around again and actually sneaks around nicely, taking over the middle of the board control. So now I step out and go for a cut push and hit a beautiful cut push around his bag, leaving his bag in place and taking both of mine with, forcing him to try to clean up his last bag. And when you force them to hit hard shots, sometimes they miss. He hits his bag in but slides off the back, and I'm able to sneak in for a 9-7 to seven round. So very strategic round. Sad I missed one off the left, but get two points back to tie it back up, 13-13. to 13. After Chow and Putty have a 12 on 12 wash, I still got first bag. Game still tied at 13s. I start with my first bag nicely up the middle. Trying to keep the pressure on Blake. You know, I was trying to lay blocks, but my blocks again are kicking on the left a little bit. So I'm okay with first bag to just keep the pressure on him. He follows my first bag and I'm able to continue staying up the middle with my second bag. And Blake here gives me a front board. So immediately, I probably should have taken an extra second. But right after the front board, again, I miss off the left, giving it right back. But then he hits the front board again. I don't know if he's trying to lay it up a little softer, trying to lay a block, but just not able to reach the board. I take an extra second to collect myself and finish up for the nine. So guaranteed at least three points. He makes the last bag for the nine on six, but we get three more points. We're up 16 to 13. Five rounds later, after trading back and forth two points each way, we're now up 20-16, to 16, and Luke starts with a really nice block to start the round. Only needing one point, it's okay to play defensive, especially when you have first bag, force them to make the hard shots, and maybe make some mistakes. So, Putty here tries to slide through, ends up missing a little off the left, giving Luke some room to push around, but gives it back to him by missing further off the left. Still central in the middle position. And Putty tries to go for some kind of cut again, but being off the side, all Luke has to do is lay them all on, push and replace very nicely, forcing Putty to get around it and possibly bully him out of the way. But again, it goes off the side. So Luke basically has the game one, almost knocks him in to give him a chance to wash out the game. But it is a six on one right now, and Putty tries to slide around. It holds up on the hole. So six on two, we end up taking the game down 24 to 16. 
Alrighty, we just finished game at three of winner's bracket on the stream. We won 21 to 16 against Blake and Putty, one of the best uh, teams here. Definitely, they were both very, very good. I didn't play that good, but Blake didn't play that good either. A lot of messy rounds, a lot of like five, five washes, six, five, one points. So I think I shot like a six PBR, PBR, but only had like a six or five. So I mean, I beat my opponent, even though the score wasn't good, which I think matters the most. Uh, Child played really, really well against Putty, scored most of the points, so that helped a lot. So. Uh, next game's winners finals against Roger and Jamie. Another really, really solid team. They like throwing uh, just fast bags. Roger's an older guy that just throws fast side surefires, basically. So almost game changer like. So it depends on what court we're on. We might try to throw faster bags if the if we're on really sticky court, like the Costellos type thing. But either way, we'll see what we do. So I'll check in with you guys after winners finals. For winners finals, we're back on the slow board. So we're back throwing my Costellos. Against Roger and Jamie throwing only fast side surefire. So Roger starts with a nice blocker. Luke pushes and replaces perfectly. Roger goes right through it. Fast side surefire hanging on the hole will probably fall, but Luke sneaks around really well. Roger just sliding up the middle, tapping his bag once again, and then Luke taps it and ends up falling in for him. So Roger's able to finish up here nicely with the four bagger. Luke trying to follow him in, ends up tapping over the back of the hole. Ends up giving up the 12 to 8 round to start. So we start the game down 4 to 0. After I get a 2 and Chow gets a 3, we're now up 5 to 4. I got first bag. Again, throwing these Costellos on the slow boards just makes it so I have to work so much less hard to get them in. But I slide my first two in, so I'm up up a bag, after, especially when Jamie goes off to the side. I'm up three now. And I slide in my third bag. When Jamie gives me one off to the right, I could sneak in here. And I somehow miss it off the back. Definitely disappointed in myself, but it's somehow hanging on. And when Jamie gives it back to me off the right, it ends up being a 10 on 5 for 5 points. So we take the lead at 10 to 4. The very next round, Chow's got first bag, and he starts nicely up the middle. Roger's super consistent with these surefires, but ends up missing that one off the left, giving Chow an opportunity for at least 2. And when Roger goes off the side, Chow keeps the pressure on, making that third bag in. Roger gets back on track, sliding it in, but then Chow finishes up the nice four-bagger, so guaranteed at least five. Roger finishes up, so it is the 12 on seven for five more, so we quickly go up 15 to four. The very next round, the theme of big rounds continue, this time my turn. I slide the first one up the middle, and Jamie's able to follow nicely. I hang on to this one a little bit too long and get lucky. It lands a little deep, but catches the hole and slides in. Third bag, though, I pull off to the left. Jamie just staying solid as a rock up the middle. And the last one, I also pull again off the side. So Jamie here to take four, takes the nice 12 on eight round. So they bring the game back 15 to eight. Five rounds later, the score is now 18 to nine. They have first bag when Roger misses his first one off the right. Charles is able to capitalize, at least guaranteed to get two points on this round if he could finish up. Roger makes in his second, and Chow continues up the middle. Roger sneaks in the third bag. Chow stays solid up the middle, and Roger is able to finish for his 10. And Chow with the nice four-bagger to get us on 20. We're now up 20 to 9. After two washes, I still have first bag, and I finally start with a good blocker, just getting in Jamie's way. And he pushes up into it nicely. I was thinking about the airmail, but I figured I could step out for a nice little right-to-left cut. And I like the way that turned out. I have full hole control now, and he just bumps me again. So now I can go fast side or slow side with another cut with some bumpers, which I do nicely. Rolling over the top and leaving my blocker there. When Jamie goes off to the side, one more cut could possibly seal the game. But even jamming up into it, he somehow has to go in without dragging me. And he goes off the back. So it's an eight on three. Five point round, but we win the game at 25 to nine. All right, we just finished winner's finals. We won that one 21 to nine. Uh, shot really good that game. Shot a 9.43 PPR. We're throwing my orange Costellos on the sideboard, on the super slow board. Man, I just love throwing my Costellos. They're just like cheater bags. I mean, they get near the hole, they go in, they airmail good. I can still cut them like crazy, hit a couple nice cut shots. So, Really nice to get the win, uh, winner's finals. But we've been sitting, I, I waited a little bit to record this. We've already been sitting for over an hour and we still have another game or two to wait or something. It's a long, long grind out wait for the tournament. So whatever, we got the chair. Let's try to get a second dub in a row at Super Bowl on the vlog. So that'd be pretty sweet. So I'll catch with you guys after the championship game. It'll be live on the stream. So I'll have the stream footage and then uh, hopefully I got a good outro, but either way, we had a good time and I'll catch with you guys after the finals. After waiting almost two hours for our game, 
Chow in the first round ends up getting a 2-0 lead for us to start, and I start with my first bag now. Up the middle and in. I'm shooting against Jose, Chow is shooting against Chris, again another really strong team. After Jose lays a block, I go immediately for a cut and just overcut the crap out of it and go off the left side of the board, and Jose cleans up nicely. So now up three after two bags. I slide in my third bag. Jose stays consistently up the middle, but then my fourth bag jumps left on me. So he can go in here to take an early five spot, which he does. We're both throwing surefires, but he gets the 12 to seven round, so they take the lead up five to two. Very next round, Chris now has first bag. Throwing his Birchberry Surefires. Slides the first one off to the right. So Chow can use it as a bumper. Nicely takes over the middle control. Chris goes through it. And then Chow gives it back to him going off the back. Chris uses his own bag as a bumper taking over the middle. Chow tries to go through but gives Chris a lane. And Chris bullies through nicely. So Chow needs to clean this up to only give up a one. And he ends up going in but not dragging his bag with. So it ends up being a 10 on seven, another three points. We go down eight to two. After two washes, still eight to two, Jose's got first bag. Jose starts with his first one on the front board. So big opportunity here. I start with my first one as a block, kind of on my side, but then Jose goes off the side on the second bag. So again, gigantic opportunity. I go for the cut and then push mine off the back. It doesn't cut. But Jose jams up into the middle. I stay outside, again, going to try to cut push mine closer. I jam them all up into the hole, so set up for a big push at the end. Jose pushes his, his in, so he's laying on a four. I can lay a big push here, and somehow I throw fast side and jam them all into the hole with a beautiful cut push. They don't end up going, and somehow I give up a point on that round, so it's a four on three. We go down nine to two. Very next round, Crystal has first bag. I'm still disappointed that we didn't get all the momentum, but Chris with a nice blocker. Luke blocked behind. Luke goes, Chris goes to jam into him and jams his in nicely. Luke goes up for the airmail and misses off to the right, but when Chris gives it back to him by going in, Luke again goes for the airmail, hits another nice airmail. Chris cleans up for the 10, and Luke goes off to the right. So even though he hit that nice airmail, still gives up a 10 on 7. So now we're down at 12 to 2. It's about to be go time. Four rounds later, we're now down 13 to four, and here's where we start making our comeback. So Chris starts with this first one up the middle, and Luke answers. Chris, nice block. Luke with the push through. Pretty standard round, but when Chris goes off the back, opening up an opportunity for Chow, but he misses off the side. Chris knocks him in, though, and Chow finishes up for the 10 on seven. Now it's only 13 to seven. Now here's the biggest round of the entire game. I start with first bag control and slide in nicely. And Jose gives me the front board. This time, I'm not going to squander this opportunity. I slide my second bag in, and he puts his next to the hole. My third bag, I put in the way of him, force him to either go through or airmail. He pushes up into it, and I step out for a big cut shot here. Go for a big cut and perfectly land around the back. So he's laying 10 on 2, has to push everything through and just jams mine and his back one in and goes off. So it ends up being a 12 on four for an eight spot. Lead change puts us up 15 to 13. The very next round, we keep the momentum going with Luke starting with his first one nicely up the middle. Pressure definitely mounting for Chris and Jose as Chris goes off the back after having such a big lead. Chow lays his second bag near the hole and Chris answers. Chow basically pushes them all in. They just need a bit of a tap, which Chris gives it. And then Chow goes to follow through, but lays his on the hole. But Chris is unable to capitalize. So ends up being a 10 on 7, three more points. We're up 18 to 13. The very next round, I got first bag. Continuing with the momentum, I slide one up the middle. When you have this much momentum in a game, you just want to keep the pressure on because they're the one thinking about their shots. But when he misses off to the one to the left, I give it back to him. He dials her back in on the second bag. I make in my third Forcing him to stay up the middle, which he does. I'm able to sneak in my last bag. Now he must go in to wash out the round and ends up leaving it a tad short, pinging, pinning against his other bag. It's a 10 on 8. We're up 20 to 13. After a single point and three washes, scores now 20 to 14. Jose's got first bag, and he starts with his first one nicely up the middle. All we need is one point here, so I follow him up the middle as well. 
When he misses a little bit off the back, I know I got my chance. I lay a nice block, force him to make difficult shots. He goes to push through, but lays behind. I ask Chow if he wants me to go up or just lay on. He tells me to just lay on. I can go up for the last bag if we need for the win. Jose is like, I probably need to go up or I don't want to give Eddie the chance to win. So he goes up for the airmail and ends up falling off the back. So all I got to do is lay on the board to win. I get my last one on the board for the six to the five. We get the one point we need and we win the championship game at 21 to 14. Alrighty guys, if you watch the stream, got the dub, second time in a row at Super Bowl, coming in, getting the dub. After a long dry streak, we went first, second, first, and should have been first, first, first. And these are three tournaments in a row, the first three tournaments I've ever played without alcohol, first, first, first. Granted, really good partner luck. I got Chow. There was a lot of powerhouse teams here though, didn't I, you know, yet. The game we played in the finals, Chris and Jose, both super, super good. Putty and Blake, both crazy, crazy good. So to get all those wins, uh, really nice. Two different kinds of bags, bunch of different conditions, a lot of cut shots, a lot of good scenarios, a lot of adjusting. So really good night overall. I think I finished the night on like an 8.2 PPR in the whole night, which is actually pretty high for how sticky those boards were and how many like messy rounds we were playing at the end. So really nice to get a second win uh, in a row uh, at Super Bowl. But, you know, appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog, another really, really fun one to make. But uh, hope you guys enjoy this and I'll catch you guys. Have a good rest of your day and week. I mean, come on, gotta have a good day. But I'll catch you guys in the next video, whatever it is. Appreciate all the support and uh, have a good one, guys. Catch you later.